This video is on the Nobel Prize winning Dr. Ivan Pavlo. Now, Pavlo and the Pavlo dog experiment is super famous in medicine and in psychology, but that's not why he won the Nobel Prize. And before we can talk about the Nobel Prize, I always like to talk about the medical history and the context of the prize. And today we're going to be talking about the GI tract, the gastrointestinal tract. And that's the tract that helps us break down food, absorb food, digest food. And that's one long tract, one long tube from your mouth to your anus, and it's helped by accessory organs like your salivary gland, your pancreas, your liver, your gallbladder. Now, what starts in our mouth, we take in food, we break it down with our mouth and our teeth. Our salivary gland secretes saliva and enzymes to kind of help us. We push that food down to our esophagus and into our stomach and into our intestines, and our nervous system will automatically, on its own, start to contract muscles to help it move down to our esophagus, our stomach, and our intestine, all the way out until we excrete it. Not only does it do that, but it will automatically help secrete things like enzymes and hormones and acid and bicarbonate to neutralize the acid. Does that all on its own, automatically. We don't really appreciate it. We just kind of eat food, digest it, think it's, wow, that's amazing. And that complexity is where things can go wrong, disorders of the gastrointestinal tract. And there are so many things that can go wrong, in fact, that we have a field of medicine dedicated just to disorders of the gastrointestinal tract called gastroenterology. And to know the disorders of the GI tract, you have to really know how the GI tract functions. And for the majority of history, we didn't know how complex it was. We had a very rudimentary understanding of the GI tract until enter Ivan Pavlo. Now, Pavlo was a Russian doctor born in 1849. He was the son of a priest, and he wanted to follow in his father's footsteps. He actually entered a seminary, but you know that's not how the story ends. He would leave the seminary to enter medical school, and he was a gifted student. He loved physiology or understanding how our body worked. And he would start with the physiology of the pancreas, and he actually won an award for that. But that's not what he won the Nobel Prize for. He would then move on to the physiology of just our GI tract in general, and he did most of his experiments on dogs. Now, this was in the 1800s. We didn't have CTs. We didn't have MRIs. We didn't have fancy imaging where we can take an image of a dog and kind of see what was going on inside them, inside their gastrointestinal tract. And so the only way to physically see what was inside them is to surgically open them up. And he would do surgery on these dogs. He would create fistulas, which is a kind of an abnormal connection from an organ to something else. He would create a fistula of the salivary glands where he would cut open the salivary glands of a dog and attach a little pouch to it. And that way he could kind of look at the salivary glands, see what it secreted and when it secreted those things. And so he would feed the dogs and notice that when the dogs ate, they would salivate into the little pouch. He would collect that and he also, also would see what it salivated, the chemical composition. He also noticed that not only when he, the dogs were eating did they salivate, but when they saw food, just looking at food, they would salivate. And we kind of do that too, right? When we see pizza, we kind of start to salivate. He also noticed that when he would ring a metronome or hit a buzzer every time he feed him, the dogs would associate that buzzer with food. And even when the food wasn't there, if he hit the buzzer or he rang the metronome, the dog would start to salivate. That was what we call conditional reflex. That's the famous Pavlo dog experiment or learning something and linking it to a stimulus. In this case, sal salivating when they thought they were going to get food when they heard the buzzer or heard the metronome. And that was his famous experiment, the Pavlo dog experiment, but that isn't what got him the Nobel Prize. And you're saying, Mike, what did he win the Nobel Prize for? Just get to it. He would take the idea of creating fistulas in the salivary gland and kind of understanding how that worked and moving it to the rest of the dog's GI tract. He would create fistulas in the esophagus, cut open the esophagus and watch how the esophagus moved food. He would cut open the stomach, cut open the intestines, create fistulas. And that way, he could see physically how it moved food, what it secreted, when it secreted it, what was the chemical composition of the things it secreted. And that laid the foundations of how we understand the GI tract today. And for his illuminating and controversial work, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1904. Now, I always like to end the video with an interesting question just to get their brain juices flowing. I left a lot of the details of what Ivan Pavlo did to those dogs out of this video. He did things like vivisection, which is cutting a dog open when it was still alive. And I left it out because I didn't think it was the right avenue to talk about those things. This is for kind of educating and entertainment purposes. If I was talking shop with a bunch of surgeons, we can talk about those things. And if you look at the websites about Ivan Pavlo, they usually leave things like that out. Now, my question is, do you think leaving those things out does a disservice to his work? Do you think it does a disservice to the dogs that died for this science and this research? 
Or do you think, well, it's not an appropriate time to talk about those things, and we can talk about those things in different venues. Whatever you think, let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe for more videos in this series, and click here for more videos in this series. Thanks.